So I've been having some people ask me about my Blender setup and my theme and I'll give you access to download my theme at the end as well. So I'll just bring us into a fresh version of Blender here. So this is brand new setup. I haven't copied across anything. The thing that I like to do is I don't really like having this header menu at the top here. I find it unintuitive. So I'm just gonna go and right click one of the uh, icons up here and I'm just gonna flip to bottom. So I just find it more natural to sit down here because as I'm working, if I'm gonna go do something, it's sort of just down here. Uh, I also don't use this T panel or whatever it is, the tools panel, I think it is. Um, so I'm just going to press T to remove that. Once again, that's just because I did not learn Blender uh, with that enabled. Uh, the other thing I like to do is for the modeling I do, I don't really care too much for this really white uh, setup that we've got here for the Mac cap. I don't even actually think this is a Mac cap. Um, but if we just go to our viewport shading panel here, I would preferably enable a matte cap and still even this one, I don't really like. Uh, so I've got like this darker one here that I think looks a little bit nicer. And then to help with the modeling, since much of what I teach is hard surface modeling, it helps to be able to see where the edges and cavities of our models are. Um, so what we can do is we can actually activate cavities and then it just gives us these ridge and valley options. I'll just leave that as is. Uh, and now you can see we can get a better definition of where the edges of our model are. So that just really helps for the visualization as we're doing our modeling. Uh, the other thing I like, and I don't normally have it toggled on by default, but is having the face orientation uh, and enabling that so that I can see whether or not I have inverted faces. So now they appear red. Um, but I really don't like the fact that it comes blue when it's correctly oriented and I believe they have fixed this in 4.4 uh, but just in case you're bringing things across or doing anything of the sort uh, what you can do to fix this if you go edit and preferences then in your themes just under the 3d viewport you can scroll down until you find the face orientation back and front so you'll just see like a really bright red and blue. Uh, you can just take the alpha out of the orientation front and then save your preferences. And then when you have the face orientation enabled, uh, the correctly oriented faces will just appear as your regular matte cap and everything else will appear as red when it's incorrect. Uh, outside of that, I leave most of this all the same, so I don't really muck around with anything else here. Uh, the only other thing that I think makes sense is obviously not using your CPU as your default rendering device, uh, switching it over to GPU, and then obviously, you know, we'd need to go ahead and in the system, set that up to use the GPU that you want there. And so once again, once you've done that, save your preferences. Um, so that would be about the main things that I do here. There's not much else that I have different when it comes to the actual viewport. Uh, what I do change though is the panels that we have at the top here because I don't use all of these tabs here. Uh, so I've chosen to actually remove most of them. Oops. And I'll just show you the way I've got it set up. And once again, this is just my preference. I'm not saying you have to do it. Um, I just find it's handy for limiting things to what I use and not having too much. Uh, so I'll have the layout, I'll have my UV editing, because if I'm doing modeling, then once I finish the modeling, I need to go and do my UVs afterwards. Uh, once I've done my UVs, or during the UVing process, I'll then do my shading, because I want to see everything set up, so that makes sense. Uh, once I've set all that up, I'll render things out, so I'll run a rendering tab so that I can see the render that I've done. And then I'll have a compositor. You might argue the fact why not have compositing before rendering because you know you need to do your compositing to have it in the render. Uh, my logic is just the fact that you know you've got to press F12 first to render it out, and then once you've got your render, then it throws it into your compositor. So I kind of try to have this in like a logical timeline of how I'm working. Um, I don't use sculpting as much, so I have it further down uh, the chain of events. So it's, it's very much a less common thing that I do, but I've got it in there. And similarly, I don't do much animation, but I'll do it every now and then. Uh, so I'll chuck animation in as well. So they're the tabs that I have because I find them rather handy. Uh, and it sort of just helps clean things up and mitigate everything. You'll also probably notice on my 
actual Blender version here. I've got this vertical tab, which is quite literally just something I've got set up to help me record vertical videos for my reels and shorts, uh, but I don't think that's all too important for the rest of you. One of the other things I like to have on by default, which isn't here, is the axes arrows, uh, so the object gizmos to move. I just find it handy to have these around to move things. And then the final part of all this, and undoubtedly what all of you would probably come here for, is the theme. So I personally don't really like all the default orange that Blender has. So years and years ago, I just went ahead and I changed all that to blue. Uh, so pretty much what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and bring this in. So I'll provide this in the resources section of my Discord server for you to all download and install as well. But I'm just going to bring in this R theme 4 underscore X, just because it works with 4.X versions of Blender. And if I bring that in, and I'll just go ahead once again, I'll save my preferences, close this out. And now we've got this nice blue over everything. And I'll also do a separate video explaining my quick favorite setup so that you guys can follow along with those with my tutorial content more easily. And then just one final thing here, if you want to keep this setup the way it is so that you don't have to change this each and every time you launch a new instance of Blender, if you just go File and Default, you can just go ahead and you can save the startup file, say yes, and then every time you open up a new instance of Blender, so let's just say I go ahead and start mucking around with things and, you know, add in a new scene here or... Something. So now I've got this. If I make a new uh, a new file, start it back up, and all of the defaults that we had set up last time, so you see that extra tab's gone now, it's all back to normal. So yeah, there you go, and I'll see you all in the next one.